limited knowledge on uh, quite a large section of the Cooper coming from South Australia, South Australian Queensland border down to Lake Eyre and this is an opportunity to, to gather further information and, um, and provide that information to a, a whole range of uh, stakeholders including mining, uh, industry, the tourism industry and pastoralists. We need to understand where we can invest our um, funding the best, uh, in the best um, possible way. To look at water holes mainly, refuge of water holes and other, and other wetland systems like the lakes and less permanent water holes. It was a great project and I think there'll be a lot of information there that will be an awareness type of information. Um, and people can either take that on board and include it in a property management plan to help them make the, the hard decisions when it does get really dry. Is that something that you feel the NRM group would have a role in furthering and promoting? Um, I think so. Uh, well, I think that is part of, part of their, their role to um, you know, help people in the area and get them involved in uh, these sorts of projects um, and help the information to get out, out to them. So uh, we'd work closely with them and because we're community members as well, um, probably have, and live here, we've got more of an insight as well. When you're standing at the Jim Carner rail and you're having a yarn, um, that's, uh, that's a, the, it's an easy, relaxing way to get NRM issues out. I think the key thing that we're looking at is the idea that water is a magnet. Surface water, the water that you see in front of you in the creeks and water holes and wetlands is a magnet for everybody and for everything. So it might be tourists used to, because they like to be near water holes, it might be pastoralists because of course they need the water supply for their for their industry. Um, it'll be mining who actually needs this idea of really looking at that relationship with water, but also the idea that um, for recreation and for people who live up here, that they become, the, the cultural landscapes become the places where people actually interact. So a cultural landscape is the first instance, it's a natural landscape, uh, but actually it's a landscape that's then modified or by human use basically. Because we're so remote and because it's such a big area to look at, how do you actually focus your resources into areas of importance? The stories of Aboriginal people, um, which had really, many of them had been lost, that's a threat that that could keep happening, but I can really see that that's being turned into a positive because there's many more stories coming out of, new, of young people coming back in to start to learn about country. What do you need? We're interested in looking at the intersection of practices, mining practices, pastoral life, natural systems and community cultural values. We're trying to find awareness of uh, Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal cultural values and how they intersect. Access to water comes in a whole range of different elements. It's actually being able to be close to water, it's being able to extract water, it's being, whether it's piped, whether it's moved. What is access to water all about from a cultural perspective? I just actually come to have a bit of a yarn in regards to um, cultural heritage um, significance and stuff to how it feels and is to myself as well as our claim group. Um, but first I'd actually like to acknowledge the traditional owners to this land, which is the um, Yandrawanta and Yarrawaka. Significance sort of things to the land and that for us is uh, very important because we actually want to preserve all of our cultural um, heritage, uh, such as sites, um, burials, um, a, lot of, a lot of places you go out to, people actually see a whole heap of stones and they just land on the ground and to them it's just a normal little area where someone's just dumped stones and to, where, to us it's actually um, like a place to where some of our ancestors have actually been and made artefacts. Uh, and tools that they used for their everyday living. We spend a lot of time talking to a lot of a lot of different groups. We've got people coming in to help us. The friends group come up here once or twice a year and, and spend several weeks giving us a hand to do all sorts of things from fencing to to uh, picking up rubbish to uh, to weed control. Um, we spend a lot of time with with the scientists, uh, talking to them, getting them out into the right places and listening to them. There's some fantastic knowledge coming in. 
and the research that sort of starts to drive our management. So as we, we learn what's happening and then as we see today, it's, uh, there's some, some really, really great knowledge coming out from, from the last three years of, of research and the last 30 years of research. We work very closely with the Town um, Progress Association and, uh, and they, they look after the town and, and the airstrips and, the, and some of the, the rubbish uh, infrastructure and, and how we're developing, getting, getting rid of the rubbish from here. It's a three-year project. It's just coming to its conclusion now. It's been a um, uh, success in doing that. And uh, so we have gathered quite a bit of uh, a new knowledge and, and, and that knowledge can then be translated to the community.